Last week we started our series on the Holy Spirit. We call it Real Relationship Now with the Holy Spirit. And today is part two. And we're asking the question. I don't know if you have read the bulletin, but it's a question. Who is the Holy Spirit? We want to know who is the Holy Spirit. It is easy to talk about God the Father, God the Son, because we can envisage them, envision them. We can see them because we have fathers and we have, we have sons. But when we talk about the Holy Spirit, it's a little bit hard. So who, who is he? Well, right from the word go, if we go to Genesis 1, 1 and 2, we see that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. So I just want to mention something. Uh, about this verse is not exactly the direction of a sermon, but the word um, God in Hebrew uh, is Elohim, and it's actually plural. What's interesting is the word created in English is actually singular. It's like saying, they is going to town. It does not make sense. You expect the word creation created to be plural. Uh, verb to be, but it's actually singular. And right from the word go, this is what we see throughout the Bible. God is both singular and plural. Keep that in mind. We are not at the uh, uh, Trinity Sunday yet, but this is where we get the idea from of one plus one plus one equals one. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So who is the Holy Spirit? What we have encountered here is the Holy Spirit is God. Is none other than God himself. The Holy Spirit is God. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, the second verse, I just want to um, have a look at that. It says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 2, Genesis 1, verse 2. The word hovering suggests a bird. And of course, straight away, what comes to mind? Jesus' baptism. And this is what it says in Luke 3, 22. And the Holy Spirit de descended in a bodily form like a dove upon Jesus. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, and in you I am well pleased. So, why are we looking at these scriptures? Have you noticed that a dove never lands on a lion, a bear, or a bull? He lands on a lamb, very gentle, peaceful. That's a hint if you want to know Holy Spirit. He is uh, very gentle, and he is very peaceful. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is God. And he is gentle, he is peaceful. What else can we say about the Holy Spirit? Well, we see in verse 3 of Genesis uh, chapter 1, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And as I explained in the bulletin, God the Father spoke, but it was actually the Holy Spirit himself that expelled darkness, filled the void, puts things into order, and the universe came into being. Yeah. The very first person of the Trinity that we are introduced to is the Holy Spirit. Isn't that interesting? How do we know that if you go back to where we were before? Look at this. And the Spirit of God was hovering. And the Spirit of God was hovering. The very first person that we are introduced to is the Holy Spirit. And that's what we see there. God spoke, the Holy Spirit kicked into action, and we have the universe. He's the one that actions. He's the one that performs miracles. And when God spoke the word, as we know from the Bible, there are two definitions of word. Word is also Jesus, as well as the Bible. That's what I've got, those quotations there. 
John 1.1 1, 1, all the way to 18. Remember, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it goes on to, he became the light, the light rejected him, but he overcame the darkness. The Bible, Second Timothy 3.16, it talks about all scriptures uh, breathed or inspired by the Word of God. In breathe, inspired, what does that say? It's a breath of God. The other word for breath is spirit. It's the Holy Spirit himself. So when God spoke, it was the Holy Spirit that did the heavy lifting. And the whole universe, including this planet Earth, came into being. We are talking about who is the Holy Spirit. Who is he? Well, now you know. What else can we say? Who is this Holy Spirit? This Holy Spirit, according to Exodus 31, verses 1 to 5, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called um, Bezalel, the son of Uri. I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold, silver, bronze, in cutting jewels, of sitting in carving wood to work all manner of workmanship. Wow. Can you see what the Holy Spirit does? He's amazing. So the very gifts and talents and abilities you have right now, it's him. It's him that has enabled you to do what you do right now. But if you are born again, he takes you to the next level. This tells us that the Holy Spirit is the giver of wisdom, of understanding, of artistic knowledge, of all manner of workmanship. Amazing part of who God is, his Holy Spirit. He's the giver of wisdom, he's the giver of understanding, artistic knowledge, all manner of workmanship. This is why I want to develop this series over a period of time so that a lot of people are excited about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and so forth, which is great. And we will get there, but you have to know who he is before we get to his gifts and his ministries. There you are. He's a giver of wisdom, understanding, artistic knowledge, all manner of workmanship. What else can we say about the Holy Spirit? Well... Judges 14, verse 6, it talks about how Samson literally ripped a lion to pieces with his bare hands. And what does it say? And the Spirit of the Lord came upon, came upon mightily upon him, upon Samson, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. You get a picture of who the Holy Spirit is. He is amazing. He is really, really amazing. He's the one that gives supernatural strength to do the miraculous, to do the impossible. The one who gives supernatural strength to do the impossible, the miraculous. This is Holy Spirit. I hope you are tracking along some of the things that the Holy Spirit does. He is an amazing, amazing God. What else can we say about the Holy Spirit? Well, according to Job 33, verse 4, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The very life you have, it's the Holy Spirit. Gives you the breath, gives you life. He is the one who gives you breath and life. You would hear me a lot during funerals, hear these words. Earth to earth, dust to dust. Do you know why we say that? Not only it's in the Bible, but it's an indication the Holy Spirit has gone. He's left. You are alive now because he is in you. His breath is making you alive. When he goes... It's earth to earth, dust to dust, where we came from. He's the one that gives life. He's the one that gives you breath. He is amazing. 
from Genesis 2.7 and Ecclesiastes 3.20. Dust to dust we return. What Genesis says, man was made out of the earth. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, according to Psalm 139, and by the way, I've got the notes over here. If you want to have a look at the PowerPoint afterwards, you can have these. Or I can email you the, the whole PowerPoint if you want to. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, according to Psalm 139, verse 7, it says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? That's a rhetorical question. Because the answer is nowhere. <laughs> There's nowhere you can go where the Holy Spirit isn't. The word that you would hear theologians um, use is the word omnipresent. He is omnipresent, meaning he is everywhere. There is nowhere you go where the Holy Spirit is absent. He is everywhere. And the amazing thing about this is that while we're having the service over here is here, but in China, he might be saving somebody from drowning. And in Japan, he might be leading a group through a forest. He can do, talking about multi-tasks, he can do billion things at once, every place. Amazing, isn't he? Omnipresent. That's why you really need to, to know Holy Spirit. He is powerful, he is amazing, and there is nowhere you go where he is not. And as I said in the Bible, he also reads your mind. He knows what you're thinking about now while you're listening. What's the point? It means it's an invitation to you. Talk to him. Ask him. Lean on him. Depend on him. Trust him. If he reads your mind, as I said in the bulletin, um, before you are anxious and worried and depressed and all of that, he's right there. He's reading your mind. And he's asking and waiting and waiting. Will you ever turn to me and talk to me and share with me what you're going through? He's omnipresent. People can lock themselves in a room or behind a concrete bar and all of that room and so forth, not Holy Spirit. He can get through walls. He can go with you anywhere, everywhere. There is absolutely no, no, uh, no place you go where he's not. In fact, if you read the Psalm 139, just about the whole thing, you will find it says that even before words were on my lips, behold, you already know them. Isn't that amazing? Before you even speak, he knows what you're going to speak about. He reads your mind, he knows the words, he knows your heart. He is amazing. So who is this Holy Spirit? Well, he is God. He does not have a body, which is why it's hard for us to imagine. He actions every word of God. So this, when I've been saying a lot about the Bible, he's the one that explains the Bible to you. He's the teacher of the Bible. He's the author of the Bible. He actions. He gives wisdom, understanding, artistic skills, and knowledge, workmanship. He's behind all of it. He gives supernatural power to do miracles, to do the impossible. He's the one that gives you breath, that gives you life. That's Holy Spirit. And he is everywhere at once, which is quite phenomenal. When you think you're praying for somebody way, way on the other side of the, the world, and Holy Spirit is there with that person. Just like that. Amazing, amazing, amazing person. So he's all of that. He is God. He does not have a body. He actions when God speaks, including his word. Uh, he gives these special abilities, talents, and gifts to people. Even your personality. He, he gives all of that. He has this supernatural way of doing things to do miracles, signs, and wonders. He gives breath. He gives life. And he's everywhere. The other thing you need to know about the Holy Spirit is that he is actually a person. And if he is a person, he has feelings and emotions. 
which means that he can be grieved. And that's what I mentioned last week. And here's the scripture. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. For the day of redemption. You know when somebody gives you a voucher, like a pack and save voucher or minor teen voucher, what do you do when you go to the shop and get all the stuff? You are redeeming the voucher. We have already been paid in full, purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we are already his. But one day, he's going to come back and say, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. I sealed the deal 2,000 years ago. Redemption. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit whom you were sealed. Sealed. Vacuum packed. No sin can enter there. Perfect. Sinless. Sealed. And that's why he's very, very sensitive. God has given the Holy Spirit this amazing, amazing task, as I mentioned last week. God the Father reigned for 4,000 years. You can read through the Old Testament. God the Son reigned for three and a half years, really. But if you take his whole life of Jesus, 33 and a half, very short. And now the Holy Spirit is reigning. 2,000 years so far on earth. Which means, um, you will hear this in the coming sermons. Jesus says, the Holy Spirit in John 16, when he comes, he will never speak on his own. He will only speak what he hears. Meaning, what God the Father and the Son are talking about in heaven, the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals what they're talking about right now. He's the revealer. He also said that he will remind you about me. This is Jesus speaking. He will remind you who Jesus is. What did he do? What did he say? It's the Holy Spirit. So, don't grieve him because he really wants to be your friend and he wants you to know what's going on. Did you know that God already knows your day, the day that you're going to die? He already knows that. And anything from this day to that day, he already sees the whole plan. Get to know him. The things that you are stressing about, he knows exactly the answer that you're after. Talk to him. He's everywhere at once. Do not grieve him. Do not ignore him. There's nothing worse when you have a conversation with a person and a person just totally ignore you. Have you ever rang up somebody and the very first word you said is hello and in the rest of 20 minutes, that's all you said was hello? You can't get a word in? It just spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke. Oh, thank you very much for listening and hang up the phone. While the Holy Spirit feels like that about many Christians, they know who the Holy Spirit, but they never talk to him. But now you know, it doesn't matter where you are, where you go, what you're thinking. He is right, right there. You have to engage him more. It begs the question, what do I do to make sure I do not grieve the Holy Spirit? I'm glad you asked that. Here is the answer. From Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32 are these words. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, and all types of evil behavior. You sort that out. You know what they mean. And in the second part, it tells you what to do. It says, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So it gives you the negatives and then it gives you the positives so that it tells you what to avoid and then the second part is what to do. If you do those two things, you will be a friend of the Holy Spirit. In fact, if I were to add something, and that is whenever you glorify Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit loves that. You know, during worship, when we are worshiping God, the more you worship God, the more Holy Spirit uh, is attracted to you. 
because you're praising, you're lifting up the name of Jesus, the one who paid for your redemption. As you focus on him, Holy Spirit comes closer and closer and closer. He says, oh, those are the kind of people I want to hang out with. I want you all right into worship, praising God, focusing their hearts and minds on God. So be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as Christ through as God through Christ has forgiven you. That's how you make sure you don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Just came to my mind, um, Kobe gave me something, it was a, probably three or four weeks ago, about husbands and wives, which I thought was brilliant, um, on how we're supposed to, supposed to um, play our roles. But one of the things, because I, I knew one of the scriptures that uh, Kobe was talking about, where it says to us husbands, make sure there is no friction between you and your wife. And it says, it says it in the Bible, so that your prayers will not be hindered. So that your prayers will not be hindered. If you're praying husbands, and it seems like it's bouncing off the roof, make sure your relationship with your wife is okay. Because the word was written, authorized by Holy Spirit, and it will never be wrong. It says, make sure that your prayers will not be hindered. In other words, your prayers will not be answered. Relationship. Holy Spirit wants to anoint your prayers and to bring your prayers to pass. Forgiving one another. Just like Jesus has forgiven you. Okay, what else can we say about Holy Spirit? Well, this is the scripture from last week. He, the angel, answered and said to Zechariah, This is the word of the Lord to Sherubabel, not by mind nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And we talked last week by saying that the words, not by might, it refers to group effort. God says it's not by group efforts that you consult hundreds or two thousand or millions of people. It's not by them, nor by power individualistically, not by your own power. But by what? But by my spirit. By my spirit, says the Lord. Now the context over here that we saw last week was Zechariah was supposed to rebuild the temple. It's a huge, huge undertaking after it was totally destroyed. And God says, actually, my man, Siri Babel, he would do it. But I just want to remind you, Israelites, children of Israel, it is not by might, not by group effort, nor by power, just Siri Babel by himself, or any of you individualists, uh, individualistically, but by my spirit. It's my Holy Spirit that this temple is going to be rebuilt, that the whole project is going to come to pass. The whole project was lapsed for 20 years. That's a long, long time. In, in, in that book too, he also says, do not, for, do not despite the beginning of small things. It's in the same, same passage of Zechariah. So, focus on the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit in this passage? He is the power of God. Acts 1 verse 8 says, And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He is the power of God. So, as you can see, if you can say that to uh, Zechariah about Zerubbabel, he can say the same thing to you. He wants you to engage with him. And finally, who is the Holy Spirit? Well, let's go through them again. He is God. He is a person without a body. He is very gentle and peaceful. He actions the word of God, whatever Jesus says, he actions. He actions this Bible. If you make any claims on the book of God, the word of God, it's the Holy Spirit that brings that claim to pass, if you truly believe that. He gives uh, people 
wisdom, understanding, artistic skills, workmanship. He gives supernatural power to do the miracles, signs, and wonders. He gives us breath. He gives us life. He is everywhere at once. He is the power of God. And finally, don't stress. Instead, express your requests to the Holy Spirit. You like that? Holy Spirit gave me that. I thought, wow, that's really awesome, Holy Spirit. I like the flow of those three words. Don't stress, but express your requests to the Holy Spirit. And that's what he wants you to do. From this day onward, talk to the Holy Spirit. Ask him. Don't do it by yourself. The definition of stress is up in a river without a paddock. A paddle, sorry. Without a paddock. Oh, that sounds good, yeah. <laughs> Heaps of paddocks everywhere, yeah. It's when you are totally clueless, no resource, you're out of your depth. Like There's nothing else you can do. That's what causes stress. Now, when you are stressful next time, remember, he is right, right there beside you. Look at that uh, Psalm 139, verse 7. It says, where can I escape from your presence? The answer is no. Where? So, please remember, the Holy Spirit is your friend. The Holy Spirit has been sent by God to assist you. And you will hear me in the coming sermons. His, one of his names is Helper. Helper. I don't know if I mentioned it in the bulletin. Um, yeah, Perakalitos in the Greek. Helper. So he wants to help you. If you're in trouble and you say, I don't know what God is doing. Well, that's because you're not talking to Holy Spirit. And maybe if you're talking, but then you don't like that person on the phone. You just talk to the Holy Spirit and hang up. You never give Holy Spirit time to answer you. You become impatient. And sometimes you say amen and then you go back to stress because you are still trying to solve your own problem. You're not giving it over. You may pray, but you are still trying to troubleshoot your own issues. So I want us to pray. And we're going to put into practice exactly what we've just heard. I'm going to leave, uh, leave this um, slide on the, on the screen. And for you to talk to Holy Spirit, you might be stressing about something, or there may be things that you are contemplating, you're thinking about, or there may be prayers that you've been asking and you don't know any answers. Well, why not start right now? Start today and see what the Holy Spirit will say and do. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you came 2,000 years ago to pay the price for each and every person who places their trust in you. You forgave their sins. And so, Lord, accordingly, for those of us who have never really put our trust in you, we want to say we are sorry for our sins, past sins, the sins we are doing, and the sins that we will be doing in the future. We are sorry, Lord. We know that this is why you died, Jesus. We ask you that you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And according to your scripture, 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us from our sins and all unrighteousness. Thank you. May that word, your scripture, be fulfilled this morning, Lord, as we turn over our hearts from unbelief to believing and trusting in you. So welcome, Holy Spirit. Here are our prayers. Here are our requests right at this moment, in a moment of silence. 
Thank you that you can read our minds. So here's your chance. Just talk to Holy Spirit about anything and everything.